I'm honored to be here today and to sit in front of so many so efficient and so great salespeople. And um, this is why I'm not going to talk to you about sales. Because look around, I doubt that I would be able to teach you anything about sales. If the best of the best come together, then there's more sales knowledge in this room than anywhere else at the same time on the planet. What I wanted to do with you, yeah, give yourself a hand. You well deserve it. Give yourself a hand. That's for all of you. What I actually want to talk about with you is something that has to do with the actual time we're in. And um, no question, in economics, we are having a tough time right now. And some people even call it a crisis. So I want to take a closer look with you at what a crisis is. And um, a crisis comes from the Greek. Crisis is a word comes from the Greek. They say crisis. And actually in the Greek language, the word crisis was exactly for the moment, for the peak when somebody who was ill was starting to get better. So what they mean with crisis is the very moment when the things change, when the things start to get better. So whenever we use the word crisis, if anybody would feel urged to use the word crisis, then let's use it in the sense of the word as it is. Things are getting better. But even before the Greek people were looking at it, and don't worry, I'm not going to hold the rest of my speak in uh, Chinese, but we should like, take a look at that. This is the Chinese sign for crisis. And the two red ones in the beginning, they are the two signs that come from two, from two other words. They come from danger, and they come from opportunity. So for the Chinese, a crisis is a combination of danger and opportunity, which already shows us it depends on what you make out of it. But I didn't want to just go for the ancient knowledge. I want to take a close look at it myself. And I took a picture of the world. And please, with me, take a picture, look at this picture of the world. And I was asking myself, let me see where the crisis is. So I took a magnifying glass and I was searching the whole world. And you know what? I found a lot of things. I found beautiful cities. I found rivers. I found mountains. I found a lot of people on this planet. But the only thing I did not find was anything called crisis. So I thought, okay, well then, but why is the news all the time talking about the crisis? Why can we read in the news um, papers? Why can we see on TV that there are people who have lost millions in one day? Well, there might be people who have lost millions in one day. No question about that. But let me ask you one question. All of you that you're in here, raise your hand. All of you that have lost already in the last couple of weeks a million or more in one day. Okay. Let me ask you, who of you has lost 100,000 or more in just one day? Well, I don't see a single hand. Who of you has lost 10,000 in one day? Well, then why should we listen to what the news say? It doesn't bother us. It must be different people. And by the way, did you ever see a newsletter um, saying, oh, people making millions in one day? No, amazingly enough, that usually doesn't show up because there's one thing and that goes with the news and that is that good news don't sell. That's an old rule. Ask a journalist. Good news don't sell. So this is why they don't talk about good news. What it actually is, is it's a historical phenomenon. Because what some people refer to as a crisis is just part of a cycle. If you look at the economy, then you see it always goes in a cycle up and down. It's always a matter of perspective. There was something like the Great Depression in 1929, where everybody said the world was going to stop rotating. People said the world is going to stop rotating. We will go back to the time when we lived in the caves. And you know what? Actually, a couple of years later, the economy was better than it ever was before. And this is because it's just a matter of what the timing is about. The same thing, by the way, about global, global warming. There's people that say, yes, there is global warming. There's other people that say, no. Well, I think it also has to do with a cycle. A lot of things in life just work with cycles. Our ancestors 
When the moon went away, they didn't say it's a crisis because they knew the moon is going to show up again. I mean, the moon goes and comes and goes and comes every single month. And that is very normal. And I believe what we see in the economy is as normal as that. But now you might say, yes, but if there is somebody who really loses the job, how can you dare saying we don't have a crisis if there's people out there that lose their job? Well, you know what? I talked to a person that lost the job. Please don't laugh at this. This is my father, but it's a couple of years ago. He was at that time for 20 years, regular business. He was working his way up. He entered after study, same company, 20 years until he was on the management board. And then one day, because in one of his departments something went wrong, and you know how it is in regular companies, something goes wrong, three or four people that are above the line, they have to go. He was fired from one day to the next without even having done anything. Now he was sitting there, and yes, that was tough times for him. You know what? Half a year later, he was back, he was in the job, better off than ever before. And you know what he told me? When I was in this new job, the only thought I had was how bad it is that they did not fire me earlier. It's all a matter of perspective. It all depends on actually how you look at the things. It is not the situation. It is actually, it is how we deal with the situation. That's the same guy. We all know him. It's, he's called Smiley and he exists in two versions. In the good version and in the bad version. In the, version where he really smiles and the one where he's bad feelings. And that is, that is, for me, that's the perfect sign. And we heard it this morning. There are so many companies outside in the market that have to think about how to pay their interest rates on their installments. Well, no question that those companies cannot think about customers anymore. But we also heard that Zepter is entirely funded on the own power, no foreign money. And this is why Zepter can in any time concentrate on the customers. And this is why Zepter also in those times can make promotions where we heard it from Mrs. Okoyak, 150 Mercedes Benz. And believe me, if you talk about 150 Mercedes Benz, ask yourself, what's the reaction you're going to have in the face of the people you talk to? Is it this smiley or is it going to be this smiley? Might it even happen that when you tell the people, hey, would you like to have one of these 150 Mercedes that they forget about that in the news there's crisis that they forget about that other people say, oh yeah, but it's getting tough right now. You know, in tough times, one thing happens. And let me show you a, um, I don't want to say a friend because the way he looks like he's certainly not a friend, but somebody who lived on the same planet than we did just a bit earlier. This gentleman here that you can see, he just didn't have the right behavior. And you know what? Because he and his friends disappeared, there was another species coming up. And in Latin, this species is called Homo sapiens, which means nothing but the wise man, or in one word, mankind. If he wouldn't have disappeared, we wouldn't be here today because I think no one of us would actually would like to take it up with him. So it was good that he went away before we actually came. And this is what Darwin talked about. You might have heard of Darwin already, of the scientist. And Darwin said one thing. Darwin said, it's only about the survival of the fittest. Let me say that again because often it's translated wrong. It's not the survival of the biggest or the survival of the strongest. No, it's the survival of the fittest. And that means it's the one that survives that is the best adapted and suited to the situation. Well, it is the one that's best prepared. And if we look around here, now what we heard yesterday and today, then there's no question about good preparation. Because if you want to be ready for what the future brings, the first thing you need is a great visionary. And the great visionary, we already saw here uh, quite a, uh, a couple of times on TV. We already saw it on, the on stage. The great visionary sits here in the first row.